Well, grace to you and peace from God our Heavenly Father and from our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for our meditation for the second Sunday of Easter comes from our Gospel lesson where John writes, Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Here ends our text. My dear Christian friends, you ever built a house of cards? I did it as a kid, maybe you did too, and I enjoyed it. It, it was fun to see how high you could get those things. If I'm being honest, though, I wasn't very good at it. <laughs> maybe I'd get up about three levels, but beyond that, eh, things got a little wobbly. It was fun, but to be sure, it was also kind of difficult. Because, of course, what do you need for a house of cards? You need a strong, steady foundation to build it upon. If you ever want to get above three levels. Because if there's even the slightest breeze, maybe from someone just walking by, or the slightest shaking of the table or wherever you're at, or if you're in New Jersey, there is pot potential for an earthquake. The slightest shaking foundation buckles and the whole structure just comes down. Because, of course, house of cards are not permanent. Eventually, they will fall, no matter if you get it up only two levels, which was my average, or if you get it up ten, it will come down. And when it does, maybe you'll feel a little bit bummed out. But it's not the end of the world, right? There's no real danger unless you're worried about a paper cut. There's no risk. There's no lives at, at, uh, that are depending on you carefully placing each and every one of those cards just right. It's not a big deal, really. As long as you're just talking about working with cards. But what if you're working with more than that? What if more important things are at stake? Your job, your finances, your relationships, your goals, your, your dreams, your future. Would you be willing, willing to risk it? You might be, as long as you were sure that the foundation, whatever it is that you're trying to build, is solid. An absolute sure thing. Otherwise, odds are you probably wouldn't do it. I know I wouldn't. Neither would the disciples. Neither would Thomas. Today, on this second Sunday of Easter, we do tend to focus a little heavily on Thomas. And I think that, frankly, he kind of gets a bum rap. Wouldn't you say? It's not entirely fair. And I say that because, really, there is zero difference between Thomas and the other disciples. True, the way that John writes the gospel kind of makes us think that the emphasis is on Thomas. But truthfully, when you think about it, every one of those men who were hiding up in the upper room, they were no better. They were, at that point, unbelievers. Not doubters with questions needing verification. They just straight up didn't believe. In the verse that came right before our text, we hear that um, after Jesus has gone and been seen by Mary Magdalene, she goes to the disciples exclaiming to them how she had seen the Lord, telling them everything that he had told her. That is a gospel proclamation, is it not? And yet, in spite of that gospel proclamation, which, by the way, was corroborated by the account of Peter and John, who both themselves had seen the empty tomb, though granted not the risen Christ, still the disciples did not believe it. John tells us on the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, 
They didn't believe Mary when she said that she had seen the risen Jesus. It's not until after the disciples themselves have seen Jesus that they believe. And the same thing happens to Thomas himself. When the disciples say to him, we have seen the Lord. And Thomas says the quiet part out loud. Unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails and place my finger into the mark of the nails and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. In other words, unless I see things for myself, I will not build my foundation, my faith, my future on this extraordinary claim. It was a risk, my friends. Make no mistake about it. There was a reason why they were hiding. Enemies had killed their Lord and Master. And they certainly would have come after the disciples as well if they were given the chance. And it wasn't like this was just a flippant, one-time thing. These disciples had left their homes, their families, their livelihoods, all to follow this Jesus of Nazareth. And their hopes had been crushed when they saw him die. It all came crashing down on that Thursday and Friday like a house of cards. And if you're expecting them to rebuild as Mary's message suggested to them, suggested that they could actually do, then it had better be a strong foundation, a solid foundation. A foundation so strong that it could replace their unbelief. It needed to be firm. Firm enough to overcome that kind of fear. It had to be a foundation that they could touch, that they could see, they could grasp. It had to be as firm as hands with nail marks in them, a side pierced by a spear, and feet with scars through them. That's what they wanted. And that's what Jesus delivered. So the question for our broken, bleeding, dying world is this. Can we build upon that foundation? Did Jesus of Nazareth actually do these miraculous signs or not? Did he really turn water into wine at Cana? Did he really heal the royal officer's son? Did he really drive out demons? Did he really heal those blind from birth? Did he really revivify a four days old corpse of his good friend Lazarus? Did he or did he not die to snatch away our guilt and sin to liberate us? and give us life with him now and forevermore. Did he or did he not die and then rise again the following Sunday morning, rising to eternal life so that we can all know that one day all sickness, all fear, all sin, all death will be undone and that we will live for, with him forever. Did he do these signs or not? Can we build on that foundation? The world continues to ask that question, just as the disciples did. But you'll notice that Jesus did not begrudge them that question. He gave them the foundation that they were wanting, the foundation that they needed. Should they have believed Mary's report and acted accordingly? Sure, of course. She had seen the foundation. 
Should Thomas have believed the numerous reports given by his brother disciples corroborating Mary's story? Again, of course they should have. They, he should have because they had seen the foundation. Should we believe the words of Mary and the disciples and Thomas? Should we believe the words of John who had been there, who could have written so many more of these signs, but tells us that these ones, these ones are the most important. These are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. Should we believe them? There's a lot at stake. There's a lot of risk here. Because this is not inconsequential. This is not a game of cards. There are futures, relationships, finances, dreams, uncertainties all at stake here. Did he do the signs or not? Did he die for you and me and then rise again? Or not. Jesus wanted us to know the answer. So he appeared to Mary. He showed himself to the disciples. And then later to not doubting Thomas, to blessed Thomas. Inviting him to come to investigate these signs. Put his fingers into the place where our salvation was won. The only wounds in all of creation which made our heavenly father smile. Thomas believed. My Lord and my God. He knew as we do, we know that Jesus of Nazareth, who is called the Christ, is the foundation. How firm is that foundation? It's definitely stronger than a table. It's strong enough for all of us to build our dreams, to build our plans upon. It is strong enough for days like today, days like tomorrow, and every single day afterwards. This foundation is stronger than the foundations of the earth. The word of Christ crucified and resurrected for you. It is a word that you may believe a foundation that you can build upon. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.